Aha, very good morning to you. Welcome, welcome, me hearties. Tis me, Scotty McClue. Monday morning, nothing gets past me, of course. Lovely to have you with us, and welcome to our first pop-up of the week, our Monday morning pop-up, just to say hi to everybody. Thank you so much to all of you who joined me last night at 8 p.m. Sunday evening. What a wonderful show that's proved to be. Very, very popular. Aha! You're first in this morning, Finlay Morris. Well done, you've beaten the lot of them. Your job is now to get the rest of them up. David McIntyre says, dinky-doo, dinky-doo, David. Lovely to have you with us. And a very warm welcome from me, Scotty McClure. Um, Finlay Morris is getting the rest of them up, so he's popped in the names. Good for you, Finlay. It's reading like uh, a register now. Hello again, says Gordon Robertson. Got it. We must stop meeting like this. How fantastic. Lovely to have you with us. And, of course, last night's show was absolutely outstanding. So there you are. If you've just joined us for the first time, it's me, Scotty McClure, the first lord of the internet, the world's top broadcaster, and the world's most humble man. Lovely to have you with us. Good morning, Scotty. David Gardner's watching. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, give Ryan Gillis a shout, Scotty, says David McIntyre, I will, David. And uh, Ian Kerr's joined us. Good morning, Scotty, says the wonderful Margaret Sheldon. Excellent, Margaret. Lovely to have you with us. And you're in the Midlands, am I not mistaken? Uh, Graham McCalley is with us. Thank you, do, buddy. Thank you, do, Graham. Good to have you with us. And a very, very warm welcome. Now, guys, we're going to have to get into the sharing early today. I think that's the secret. Uh, morning, Scotty Boys, is the wonderful Jack Arthur. Morning, Jack. Lovely to have you with us. You're all up and about. You're very, very clever people because this lockdown is really playing havoc with people's body clocks. You know, so there it goes. And I think that everybody that thought, whoa, a lion, that would be great. I think they're starting to think, no, this is uh, doing my head now. You know, because the trouble is we might go to bed a bit later. I mean, I've got a confession, a confession which I'll fish up. I'll, I shall fish up during the program as to what I did last night. There you are. Last week, my confession was I watched Elephant Man. Harrowing, harrowing. So sad, you know, wonderful man. Dinky do, Scotty, a fresh week ahead. Stuart McLean, a fresh week ahead. Wonderful. Every day is a school day. Every day is a new day. Welcome, welcome, I say. Hello, Scotty McClure. It's Monday. It's the start of the week. How are you today? Kareem, I am outstandingly good today. Very, very well. Quite remarkable for my age, I think. There we go. And uh, lovely to have you with us. I don't understand this, Kareem. You send me a lovely message and then afterwards it tells me Kareem Zachariah is watching. Really? Oh, Sherlock. Fantastic. <clears throat> what was for breakfast this morning, Scotty? Says Finlay Morris. For me, slightly naughty this morning, Finlay. Uh, a wee roll and slice. No, that's not all. And a wee roll and egg. Is that too much, do you think? Maybe maybe we shouldn't, you know. A brilliant, magnificent show last night. It was absolutely outstanding, Gordon. I don't understand. And people are just watching it and watching it and watching it. What was different? I don't know if you've got any advice or information or anything and can tell us why last night was such an outstanding show. I would be very grateful to find out. So there we are. The lovely Susan Forrest has joined us. David McIntyre is determined to get Ryan Gillis up this morning. Morning, Scotty. How are you, buddy? Says Brian McCarran. Brian McCarran, what a top man. How lovely to hear you. And I send regards and regards to all your lovely family. Do tell. Say, McClure's asking for you. So there we go. Peter Connolly, dinky do. David McCallum. Hi, Scotty, just out of hospital with that horrible disease. I nearly died with it. I'm at home recovering. David McCallum, I never knew. I'm so sorry you've gone through this, but you're out and you're at home. Oh, thank goodness, Davey, because it is not a good thing at all. There's never too much, Scotty McClure. We're in a pandemic. 
Talk into an egg and slice where hunger dictates. Well, Finley, I mean, my goodness, we can't talk about hunger, can we? But, uh, oh, James. Oh, it was lovely. Have you ever had that one when uh, a wee bit of oil runs down your chin when you bite in? Have you ever had it that a bit of egg yolk runs down your chin when you bite in? And you have to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, that you're not in your in your best suits. <laughs> Good morning, Scotty, because... I've learned to do the boiled eggs, and I think I'm right. Um, what I do is get the water absolutely boiling, and then just very carefully lower them in on a draining spoon. On an ice cream scoop is quite good, uh, but don't try that at home. And, um, and don't try it outside either. And into the pan, and then just the four minutes, and out they come. Tap, 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 tap. And how you get a perfect boiled egg. It's wonderful. And I quite like to slice them up, you know. Pot them a wee bit toast. Andy Clues. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, Andy Clues. Lovely to have you with us. Guys, can we share? We need to get these numbers up, 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 up. Oh, I mean, I know it's early in the morning for some of the lazy bones. Sleeping in the sun. Right, so where are we? Uh, we are on a page. Share to a page, it says. I'll go to the big Scotty McClue page. Have you all seen that? 6,000 of you, over 6,000 of you have joined me on there. And Twitter, if any of you have got a Twitter account, follow me, at Scotty McClue. There's well over 4,000 have joined us already. It's incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're very big on Twitter as well, and YouTube, of course. So there we go. Wonderful. Oh, I'll just take that off. Hang on a wee second. There we are. Lovely. I'll do that. And uh, hi, we are live. I've put hi in. Do you think people like hi? Do you think is that quite a nice thing to say? Hi, we are live now. <laughs> You've got to tell them, haven't you? You've got to. You've got to tell people straight. Have you ever told somebody something several times and they still don't get anything? Do you understand? They go, oh, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not an idiot. And then they go and do the wrong thing. Oh, ho, ho. people are very, very conscious about being an idiot or not. I'm not an idiot. That sort of thing. And I remember some academics, academics can be a wee bit naughty, um, you know, about talking about their friends, you know, they can, they can have a wee bit of a go at each other. And I remember a top academic, there were university lecturers, I was doing a wee bit of university lecturing, and there were university lecturers, and one of them they were talking about had three doctorates, I think, he certainly had two, and maybe a master's, uh, an MLIT, and uh, they were going, well, John says, and he goes, yes, but John's an idiot. Published books and everything, you know, they have a go at each other. <laughs> Thanks, mate. This is Brian McCarran. Not at all, Brian. You are well, well, Drew. Are we thank you. John Gallagher's watching. Jack Mellie's Dinky Do Scotty McClure. Dinky Do Jack. Lovely to have you with us and a very good morning to you all. Guys, let me know you're here. Give me lots of thumbs up. We love hearts. Uh, laughing faces, anything that's in front of you, get tap, 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 tap on your phone. Uh, McGinty McGuinness, good morning, Scotty. A cracking breakfast. Do you think so? Are we, uh, are we kind of, these kind of waxy rolls that you get out the corner shop when you've queued with your social distancing? The waxy rolls. Hey, thank you, my darlings. The waxy rolls and, um, you know, and I'll tell you, is it naughty? to pop the roll into the pan just for a second or two once you've served up the slice and the egg. Is that naughty? Just a wee tap in the pan, we turn over, nice hot pan. I don't know, you know, but, uh, but you tell me. It's Anyway, nice healthy breakfast. Scotty, can you give the Angels in Blue a shout out? It's a charity single, Derek Buckham. I certainly can. Big shout out. To the angels in blue, we say dinky do from Scotty McClue and every single one of you to the angels in blue. Fantastic. Kareem says, Scotty McClue, four day week this week for schools. Long weekend. Uh, a wee holiday would be lovely. Yes, you're needing a break. 
You're needing a break, Kareem, absolutely, because there's been a lot of stress on the pupils and the teachers trying to get the work organised. You know, I'm quite sure of it. Teachers do a wonderful, wonderful job. They really do. And uh, the pupils are great. Margaret Sheldon says, your shows are always interesting. I learn so much uh, from you. Love it. Margaret Sheldon, we learn from each other. Yes, this is a get-together in the morning for information, education, and entertainment. And I had to get rid of a couple of people last week because they just went into, they hadn't picked up on the tone and timbre of our broadcast, that uh, it's a nice thing, and we don't have a go at each other. And they brought some of their um, dreadful things with them, you know, their prejudices and that. And I understand, I understand prejudice, but we don't need it in our broadcast. Look at the, the damage that's been done in society with pride and prejudice. There we are. Pride and Prejudice, that's actually a novel I lecture on, would you believe it? So there you are. I, I lecture on Pride and Prejudice uh, in English literature. Very, very interesting. Fantastic book. Written um, around the Regency period, 1815. And, um, you know, when, when, when you look just to everything that the authoress was dealing with as well, you know what I mean? Women's rights in the early 1800s in Britain, anywhere in the world. Charlotte Lafferty, morning, Scotty. Morning, Charlotte. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky-doo, I say. Dinky-doo, Scotty. Top of the morning to you, Nikki Graham. You are a top lady. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> uh, not too much, Brecky. I had a four-egg cheese omelette and... Two long sausage slices. It was epic. Graham McCanny, that is epic. So there you are. That's an epic. You know, you used to see these great epic movies like Ben Hur, <laughs> Charlton Heston, all that sort of stuff. Maybe in Scotland, we should have an epic means two sliced sausage and two eggs, a four egg omelette. That's a cracker, that. Now, with the omelette, do you add anything to it? Do you add a little bit of milk or water? Or do you just go straight for the eggs? Do tell. How do you do an omelette? Same with scrambled egg. Do you add a little bit of water, a little bit of milk? I used to put a tiny little bit of milk in. And then it was a top cook that said to me, no, 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 no. You can, you can add a little bit of water. Pardon me, it just makes the eggs go that little bit further, I think. Alan Morris is watching, Nicky Graham. Thomas Peden, good morning, Scotty. Morning, Tam. Lovely to have you with us, and dinky-doo. And remember, there are no sanctions for coming late to the table, because the fact that you're late means you've missed a moment of Scotty McClure, you've missed a moment of life, so you've been punished enough. That's our thinking. What do you think, Tam? Robert Dean, dinky doo. Good day, mate. Good day, Robert Dean. Are you from Oz, Robert? Tell me if you're from Oz, and we'll do the hat. So there we are. Um, Cameron Jackson's watching. Dinky doo, Oz says Finlay Morris. Good morning, Scotty from Airdrie. How are you today? Says the lovely Jean Smith. We're wonderful, Jean, and two kisses to you, my darling. Dinky doo. Come on, Scotty. The angels in blue need your support. We've done that, Derek Buckham. Did you not hear it? There we are. You need to be listening. If you're asking for a shout-out, you've got to listen in and hear your shout-out. And I said, dinky-doo from all of you to the Angels in Blue from Scotty McClure. Excellent. So they've had the shout-out. We look after angels. We can have a round of silent applause, if that would help. Round of silent applause for the Angels in Blue. Excellent. No problem. There we are. There's no idiots in this broadcast. No, not now. A couple did join us late last week. And, of course, they waded in. And um, we had to say, no, 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 no can do. So there we are. Hugh Beatty's watching. Dinky do. Uh, McGinty McGinnis says, dinky-doo, he's up and about, Tam. He's been on, so there you go. Uh, Robert Rovers is watching, Ray, come on the Rovers. And uh, Thomas Beaton's shouting on everybody here. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. Morning, Scotty, remember the old adage? 
Stupid is as stupid does. Yes, a lady said to me, really, well, I can't, um, uh, you can't do anything with stupid. I think she was having a go at me, and I said, no, but I did try. <laughs> there we go. Ned McMillan's joined us. Dave Anderson, welcome, welcome. So lovely to have you with us. And great to join in today's meeting of the Intelligentsa. Uh, Peter Conley, who's something of a rhymer. Yes, remember Thomas the Rhymer. And do you remember Thomas the Shrubber? What was Thomas the Shrubber in who arranged shrubbery? Can anybody remember Thomas the Shrubber? Um, that's right, for Peter Conley, another wee right. Make sure at night when you go to bed, set your alarms at 10 for the watershed. That's the time to join Scotty for the pop-up show. It's on Monday to Friday, five days in a row. There's more. And there's more. There's more. Uh, five days in a row. So we hope you can join us round about then. And remember to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. <laughs> That's got to be the best, right? Now, I want you, I'm going to read it again. Hi, Longshanks. I want you to read it again, and I want you to show your appreciation for the quality of the poetry that Peter Connolly has gone to all the trouble of making up. Are we ready? Another wee rhyme. Right. I shall do a bit more rap style, I think. Make sure at night when you go to bed, your alarm set at 10 for the watershed. That's the time to join Scotty for the pop-up show. It's on Monday to Friday, five days in a row. So we hope you can join us round about then. And remember to tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10. Dinky do, Peter Connolly. That is an outstanding point. Massive round of silent applause. <laughs> we love it. Fantastic. Show your appreciation, guys. I want smiley faces, thumbs up, um, hearts, um, anything laughing. Yeah, all these. Yeah. What's the red one with all the red marks in the face? What's all that one? Somebody tell me what that one is. Morning, Scotty, says the wonderful Ned McMillan. Good morning, Ned. Have we shared? Guys, we must share. You must, must, must share. Or the figures go down. You need to tell 10 to tell 10. Now, come on. We must practice what we preach on here. Oh, uh, Scotty McClure, I'm concerned that social media is showing lots on voting intentions. Uh, the Tory party has gone up in vote. Also the SNP. However, a week is a long time in politics, as they say. Yes, absolutely. Social media showing lots of voting intentions. The only really true poll, to be honest with you, Kareem, is what comes in on the night after the polls have closed. And they can do exit polls. They can do all these things. And a lot of the broadcasters are very, very skilled and very able. But I think you can only do that. I mean, the mainstream media was putting terrific pressure on the opposition to say, we don't want you in because if you don't leave Europe and you, and you as the opposition conspire against us and ask us to pay tax, then, uh, you know... You're not on, so we will do everything we can to get our own people into Downing Street who will do, um, you know, what we lobby them to do. That's why we have our wonderful, wonderful civil service. And when there was all that big row about the Home Secretary allegedly um, treating our permanent secretary not uh, evenly, allegedly, um, Everyone's going, ah, oh, these fat cats in the civil service, they need to get their wings clipped, they need. You never, ever, 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 ever knock the civil service. And I once saw a young and fairly experienced MP up on his hind legs in the House of Commons, and uh, 
he, he said, I lead the bleeding fairly and squarely at the feet of the civil service. And I watched it. My jaw hit the floor. And I thought, incredulous. I thought, he will either have to go or he'll be back on his feet with an apology. Sure enough, McClue was spot on. Right next day, back up on his hind legs, completely contrite. I apologize unreservedly to the civil service and apologize unreservedly to the house. So there we are, smacked bottom. Yes, absolutely, metaphorically speaking. So there you go. So you never, ever, ever attack the civil service because they are the permanent government. They do an outstanding job and they are apolitical, the same as Her Majesty the Queen. All right. So, right. Longshanks, welcome. Uh, no water, just milk for the omelette makes it more fluffy. And Margaret, I've got one of these old whisks that you, you wheek round. It'll be about, I think it came out in 1948. I think it was probably a, a wedding present to my mum and dad. And I've got a great theory. If it ain't broke, you don't fix it, you know. So I'm getting on and I beat up the eggs like that. And I've got one of the wee wiry ones. And you give it the side stuff like that in a kind of a wee circle or a wee, a wee figure of eight. And are they still very good? And it fluffs it right up. And your omelette goes, woo! My mother used to serve me an omelette saying, now eat that before it goes down. <laughs> Wonderful. Sure am, dinky do, Robert Dean, dinky do la. Longshanks. Big apology from Longshanks. No need, my dear fellow, but there we go. I shall read it out since you've been kind enough to send it in. Sorry I was late this morning. Last night's munchy box came back to haunt me this morning. <laughs> We're just talking about the munchy box because you get if you've had a light refreshment and you're phoning for food because you get the munchies, don't you, from from alcohol. You're well, starving, you know, and the more you have another, another wee drink, starving. Let's alter a munchie box. In it comes with the kebab meat and the, the chips and all the rest of it. Hi, Nogan, says Margaret Sheldon. Fantastic. So, long shanks. I hope you're all right and a very warm welcome. No sanctions for being late. Missing 15 minutes of McClure is punishment enough. Absolutely, Finlay Morris. You got it in one, buddy. Absolutely, no problem, bro. Uh, Michael Cracknell is watching. Thank you, do, Michael. Lovely to have you with us. What a top man. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Now then, Noggins Richie says, Hi, Margaret. Two wee kisses there having a wee chat. Omelette. Graham McCallie has got the solution here. Omelette. Straight egg. And a wee pinch of salt. And pepper. Well, I don't pinch the pepper. I've got a, I paid the extra few pennies in the supermarket for the, the pepper mill. <coughs> they were reduced to two quid or something. It was quite good. And uh, sometimes pepper mills, I don't think they're all refillable. Is, is, is that true? You could just about break your, break your wrists trying to undo the top. Omelette. So here we are, Graham McCallie. Are we all listening? Some of you might want to have a pen and paper handy, a stub of a hard black pencil, a frontly jotter with knee batter beside your telephone, ready to get this done. Omelette, straight egg and a wee pinch of salt and pepper to finish. And scrambled eggs, I follow Gordon Ramsay's recipe off the video on YouTube. Good. I hope you don't add in some of his comments. There we are. Tam's getting everybody up. Love this, Peter, says Finley. Finley, are you having a nice time watching McClure? We love it. Uh, good morning, Scotty. Thank you, do. Hope you're coping well, my friend. I am in Sunny. Is he abroad? He's in Balach. Stephen McMahon. Lovely. Oh, Stephen McMahon. It's interesting. I can remember somebody called um, Mahoney. And I couldn't get this. It was Mahoney. And uh, his, he called himself Marnie. Marnie. There we are. <clears throat> Great rapping, Scotty. Thank you, Margaret Sheldon. Yes, I'm becoming a bit of a rapper. There's one on TikTok for those of you who are 
<coughs> bang up to date. <coughs> Where's my water? <coughs> Don't worry about the cough. Had it for 20 years. Oh, that is lush. Uh, so there we are. So if you go on TikTok, uh, some of you might not know about TikTok, but TikTok, my clue is massive on TikTok. And you'll see me with the dog and a lot of very sound advice. And uh, I do a bit of rapping, you know. And uh, you may have heard better rapping at Christmas, mind you. Thomas says, Tam, can I have a round of silent applause for my pal? So there we are. Quigley, a.k.a. Plainsley Harriet. <laughs> Plainsley. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, you can have a round of silent applause, Tam. There we go. Big round of silent. Come on, everybody, join in. Silent applause. You make a sound, you're out. Right, excellent stuff. More shooting. What are we doing? You distract me. You guys distract me. And we can't get the shading done and the figures will fall. People go, oh, hey, back to my bit. No coping with this at all. All oh, that sort of ideas. You, you must share, guys. I'm going to start it off here. I'll share to Scotty McClue, global radio and television producer. That's another Facebook page, guys. And there's a big one with about... Oh, hey, right, that's gone. Uh, so Global Radio, and we are live now. Get yourself here right away. Otherwise, there will be big trouble. Shall we put that? Or is that too much? No, that's, maybe, that's maybe a wee bit sort of sinister, isn't it? We are live now. There we go. And we'll let them make up their own mind. We are live now. You see, this is different to anything else on social media. I've noticed that on the social media platforms, people have a go at each other. And they say not very nice things, all these wee keyboard warriors. So as soon we had one the other day we had to get rid of. I'd mentioned how important it is that we realize that the Queen is the sovereign lady of all of us, regardless of your background, your creed, your religion, your anything at all. She's the queen, and that's that. And they came right on with some dreadful comment, and they got a lifetime ban because they're programmed in their tiny, tiny brain to make that sort of comment. And it's the same the other. I was thinking last night, McClue welcomes everybody. I am a citizen of the world. I am apolitical, and I am non-prejudiced. Do you know what I mean? If I have a go at somebody, it's for their own good. So there we are, you know. So when we used to talk about, you know, if people were carrying a lot of weight, should they pay double on the buses? Because we're looking at their health. You know, that sort of idea. So there we are. So very welcome. Scott McClure, I do not have Twitter. What is it? Is it better than Facebook? No, it's just all these platforms. If you're a, if you're a, a, a world broadcaster, if you're the world's top broadcaster, there's only one of me, and uh, if you're the first lord of the internet, you're multi-platform. So what I do, if, if somebody came along with a few quid in this thing, I want to invest in the Scotty McClue brand. We would look at multi-broadcasting all the time, multi-streaming on all the different platforms. Because at the moment, if I want to stream on YouTube, I need to go on to YouTube and stream there, and you can't see it here until I share it. And one platform, I'm not terribly keen on sharing the others. So if I put Scotty McClure on YouTube, there's something, ah, don't, don't share that. Don't encourage these people, blah, blah, blah. That's why my figures there are sitting at 18 and not 2.8 billion, because the platform decides who sees it. So a lot of people who would watch right now can't see it. So we've just got to do our best on the platform, if you get me. So there you are. And Twitter have their own streaming called Periscope, which I do. And have some Periscopes are up at oh, 25,000 and things like that, you know. 
Uh, so that's what happens. Wonderful Gary Blair's watching. One of our top accordionists. So there you are. Love that wee number that you did last night. That was uh, that was very very dexterous, shall we say? But I still I still felt that um, Flet from Flotta was a wee bit on the flas on the fast side. But that's me. So there we are. Um, I'll have a wee listen to uh, Ali and Phil later on it because it's on their main album. And we'll get a listen. The wonderful Gordon Sterling has joined us. Who who are you, Gordon? Lovely to have you with us. Are you thinking of Roger the Shrubber from Monty Python's Holy Grail? Robert Rovers, you are a genius. That's what I'm talking about. No, I don't think it was. Was it Roger the Shrubber or Thomas the Shrubber? It's a shrubbery. Thomas the Shrubber. You know, all that sort of stuff. I, I love Monty Python. I just, I get it. The whole thing, you know, the Holy Grail, wonderful. The life of Brian and all these things that caused a huge stushy at the time. I wonder if it would still cause such a stushy. I remember the churches were all up in arms about the life of Brian. He's not the Messiah. He's a very naughty boy indeed. <laughs> it's one of the, the worst I are. Morning from Largs, Scotty, says the wonderful Andrew Fife. Good morning, Andrew. Lovely to have you with us, guys. We need a massive share right now. I beg of you, get sharing right now. That's what I was going to say to you why this is different from all social media. When I ask for a share in social media, people go, hi, that'll be right. I don't share that. Please do share and share and share and share and share because that's what the pop-ups are dependent on you. So there you are. I can only be as good as you are. Yes, no pressure, eh? So there we go. Neely David Cooper, Neely Davy Cooper McCallum is watching. Welcome, Neely Davy Cooper McCallum. Lovely to have you with us. The new emoji is care, says Susan Forrest. Oh, well, I send some of them, Susan Forrest. I send the new emoji. Fantastic. To show we care. I wasn't sure all the kind of red down face and that, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I hoped it wasn't a punch in the gub or something like that. Uh, good morning, McClure. Sorry I missed the start. What are you havering about this morning? Gordon, you must not judge everybody by your standards. Not everybody havers. So there we go. And certainly never my clue. I might slave her, but I don't have her. That's the stuff. There's a wee song. There's our motto. We don't, we might slave her, but we do not have her. So there you go. And the fact that you're late, Gordon, you have had punishment enough because you've missed. Guys, I can't believe this. He's missed 35 minutes of the program. There's only 25 minutes to go, and it feels like we've just started. How can this happen? Good morning, Scotty. Dinky doo. Colin Edwards is watching. How, who knows the platform really, really well? Who can tell me how we get the figures up on Facebook? So there you are, because I used to have like 20, 30,000 would join me. You'll see some of the pop-ups. And... Um, now it's a few hundred join you for each one. Now, when I look to see who's on, that figure is a lot less than it used to be. So I used to click live and look who's on already. And it would say, Gordon Sterling and um, 4,600 others are on. And now I look and it goes, Gordon Sterling and 400 others are on. Now, that's surely nothing to do with McClure. In fact, we know it's not. So there we go. Good things to come out of this lockdown is my wife has upped her gardening skills. She's dug a hole up the top of the back garden. I'm not sure what she intends to put in it yet. Hmm. Peter Connolly. Interesting. Carmack McCaskill's watching. I think that would be a jeep, by the way, for people panic. Right, jeep, Peter, so we all know it's a jeep. Uh, Stephen Vergamini, am I pronouncing Vergamini properly or is it Vergamini? 
So there we are, Vergem, Vergemini. I think it will be the soft. I think it will be Vergemini. Uh, Stephen McMahon, ha, ah, ha, ah, Stephen, the wonderful Kenny Hyde is watching, he's just joined us. Kenny, welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Remember, there are no sanctions for being late to Scotty McClue's morning pop-up. We understand, and we feel that anybody who has missed the start has been punished enough. So there'll be no sanctions, Kenny. What Kenny doesn't know about cars is not worth knowing. An absolute top man. Scotty McClure, you can't beat steak, chips, and steamed veg. I love it. Kareem Zachariah. McClure's got a tip for you. For those people who, people say, would you like some garlic with this? Oh, no, 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 no garlic for me. Oh, heavens, no. Oh, oh, can he stand it? No, but it's good for, no, 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 no. I've got a very closed, tiny, Mind when it comes to food, just stuff I've experienced before, nothing new, right? So, not everybody's into garlic, but here's a beauty if you cut open a piece of garlic and you, you, you taste a bit of raw garlic, you go, ah, burning, it's burning my tongue, you know, and of course, the rest of you just smells of garlic, which I love, a beautiful smell. Remember going to France and every day. Onions and garlic. That was all you could smell at the station. It's fantastic. If you steam your vegetables, like I have got a steamer, okay? I, uh, I purchased it. And if you steam your vegetables, pop in, um, well, I, I put, you can put in as many cloves as you, you think you fancy. And steamed garlic is gorgeous. There's hardly a taste but it's very, very nice in the mix. So I do the wee tatties in the bottom steamer. It's a three-tier job. Uh, so the wee tatties go in. We've got the water. We've got the wee tatties, just the wee Scottish tatties at, you know, 75p a pound a bag. And um, then in, let them do about maybe 20 minutes. In with the steamed veg, the broccoli, the carrots, the cauliflower. And also pop in a few cloves of garlic. And because uh, as you know, the Romans used garlic. Somebody recently was saying, can we please explain? Fake news. Garlic will not cure coronavirus. I thought, perhaps not. But it's very interesting that people were thinking of it to try. You know? So there we are. I always, I always feel quite good. Your body goes, oh, thank you. When you give it some steamed veg. A wee bit of garlic. That water's looking a bit cloudy, Scotty. Hey, hey, good Glasgow water. Look, Captain. No, it tastes outstanding. Very often, you used to be able to taste when they'd chemicalised the water, flu fluoridised it and the rest of it. You thought, I'm not having that. You know, that stuff. Sometimes I've gone to my bed and thought, no, I'm not drinking that. I'm not giving that to the dog. You know, that sort of idea. Because you can you can see, but this this is just gorgeous. Scotty, I'm looking forward to lockdown restrictions easy so you can have a live show. Finlay Morris. We talked about that last week. A friend and I were saying, what is the next step? Now, I personally think the next step for Scotty McClure is commercial television, half an hour on a Friday night. So I'm going to see if I can manage to convince the bosses. But remember that these people are, again, used to working to formats. And they've struggled to get where they are in the television industry. And they don't want to risk their job by putting on something new. And it flops. But two things here. One, Scotty McClue has never, ever flopped. Two, it's not new. It's been about for 28 years in about six weeks' time. All right? So it's well, well proven that the people are into it. Now, the beauty for commercial television, they go, well, could you write us a treatment, a treatments, an explanation of what your idea is uh, so they can nick it? So you've got to, <laughs> and you'll see somebody else doing it. Some big glam, some young glam boy pops up to do Scotty McClure. 
it flops and they go, see, see, nah, it didn't work, didn't work. The times I've had this on radio, not being able to get work because somebody else has tried to be me and it's flopped. And I said, hi, Scotty, what can we do for you? I was thinking of doing a talk show for you. Nah. Nah, we tried, we, we tried a talk show and it just bombed. Oh, no, Scotty, no. No, but this is Scotty McClure. No, we wouldn't like to risk a talk show. So that's every talk show host bombed out. Do you know what I mean? Then talk radio stations. Oh, no, no, we tried that and that did not work. Yes, but did you do it properly? Oh, we did. We put a lot of money into it. No. It's not a lot of money, it's to do with the creative idea. And then a guy said to me recently, now, I don't mind because imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And a guy said to me recently, he said, um, I, 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 I try to do everything you do. And I thought, there's a reason that won't work. And I didn't tell him, but there is a very simple reason it won't work. And I'll tell all of you um, at some point. So there you are. Why why it doesn't work. So there you are. It's interesting. It's got a clue. I will download Twitter and give it a go. I'll follow you on it. Kareem Zachariah, I think you will love it because everybody, I can't say everybody's on Twitter, but it is absolutely massive. And it's international. And you'll see tweets from everybody, Donald Trump, Boris Johnson, the whole lot. You'll see tweets from every political party. You'll see tweets from every conspiracy theorist. You'll get also like somebody said yesterday, it was quite interesting, they said, um, this lockdown is costing people jobs and relationships. We need to stop it right away or something like this and um, you know and uh, there is uh, you know this is this is costing us all that and that guy said uh, there must be an alternative and the guy said yes there's an alternative it's called death so that put his gas at a peep so you get everybody sounding off but it's a wonderful platform and periscope is its um Visual pop-up, it's live stream, and I do quite a lot of periscopes. You'll see them on. Uh, so give it a go, Kareem. I think you would thoroughly enjoy it. I know you're a very busy man, but uh, a nice Twitter account. So there you are. Um, just pop in at and, and try your name, and if it's not gone, you're, you're in. Uh, Roger, Roger, played by Eric Idle. All right, Robert Rovers, I bow to your superior knowledge. Roger the Shrubber. So the must have it. I had it in my head. It was Thomas, but Roger it is. Peter Wood is watching. Good morning, Peter. Lovely to have you with us and a big dinky do to you. What a top man you are. Welcome to Scotty McClue. Any ideas where I can go for a nice walk around the West End today? Gordon Robertson, yes, I don't know where you are, but I used to, I'll tell you what I used to do when I stayed in the West End. I went into the Kelvin walkway, which was opposite the house. So out the close, cross the Kelvin walkway, down along the Kelvin, you could cross the bridge and up to uh, the park. You could cross the uh, the Chinese bridge, I think we called it, the Anne Bridge along at um, the other end of the park, just at uh, the old um, the old Queen Margaret Station. Have you ever seen the old Queen Margaret Station, Gordon? Why don't you take a walk to see that? When you come into the park at, with the kind of mock Tudor entrance at Queen Margaret Drive, along the Great Western Road was the entrance to the old uh, station. It went on fire. And if you put yourself around so you're entering the park and you'll see a big clump of bushes uh, over to your left, if you make your way into the bushes, right? Do you notice what you'll find in there? Just take your time. You'll come across a chance to view the platform of the old uh, Queen Margaret Drive station. So there's, there's a wee something for you. And the squirrels will be there. I think they've shut. I don't know if the parks are open. I think they are. They certainly, I think they shut the lights of the, um, the greenhouse. Now that greenhouse 
anybody who knows Greenock will know where the second Greenock Academy was in Madeira Street. Now, when I was wee, that was one house, right? That was just one house. And it had been built in 1863. And the architect that designed that house, uh, it belonged to Scott, the shipbuilder. Uh, I said Robert Lorimer Scott. I think it was Robert Lyons Scott. R.L. Scott. He died in the 1930s. And he was Scott of Scott Shipbuilding. And the house was called Balclutha. And it was demolished in 1959. And as a wee boy, I can remember looking along Brisbane Street and seeing this massive house in the trees, huge gardens. So all the way between, uh, what would that be along there? Finnert Street and Newark Street was one house. And that was, I think, 11 Newark Street, Balclutha. The sister house of that was on Rose Neath. The architect had designed one on Rose Neath. And um, they had a massive conservatory and plant house on that house. When the house was demolished, the conservatory was bought probably by Glasgow and uh, taken down bit by bit like, like Meccano, giant Meccano, and reassembled in um, the park at Queen Margaret Drive. And that's your plant house. It's a conservatory from a big house in Rose Neath. See, I am not just an athlete, you know. So there we are. So Gordon Robertson, I would suggest a wee walk like that if the park is open. And I'll tell you another thing. If you go along the Calvin walkway and uh, you'll have a beautiful voice, I would imagine Gordon Robertson, because you had a classical education. And if you go along, you'll come to Kirklee Bridge. And when you're under Kirklee Bridge, look up and you'll see an arch. Watch that there's no water dripping. You don't want that in the eye. And um, you'll see a beautiful, perfect Norman arch. And I would suggest you try out your singing skills. Like I have a tenor voice when I can, when I can be bothered going all the way up there. And I used to sing under the arch. Everybody would go, he's half his seat. I used to sing under the arch of Kirtley Bridge. I would practice. And the sound is outstanding. It's cathedral quality. Try that, Gordon. Now, have I not spoiled you enough? For goodness sake, Gordon Robertson. You're ruined, man. Spoiled. Any good? Uh, you'll just have to keep on until 11.30, Scotty. My goodness me, Robert, dear. Are you enjoying it? Good morning, sir. Peter Wood says, just to let you know, we've managed through a just giving page for NHS Shetland to raise £8,000 in two weeks for some accordion tunes live on Facebook. Peter Wood, you are an absolute top man. Fantastic, beautiful playing. And the other night, I put up the Lomond Scottish Dance Band. I think, I may be wrong, but I think they're from Fife. And um, they are absolutely outstanding. A lady and a gentleman. He does accordion and piano. She does piano and fiddle. And boy, are they good. So there you are. So uh, get yourself onto that. They do a live concert on Facebook in the evenings. So see if you can catch up with them. Lomond Scottish Dance Band. And they do an online Kaylee. And uh, it's her and him. And they are lovely people. They are funny as well. And they have a good laugh. The banter's great. But the playing is just outstanding. Wonderful. Uh, the Mojis hugging a red heart. Susan Forrest. I send you a load of emojis. I can't do it on here at the moment, but you all can. Marcus G, good morning, Scotty. Just in my tea break at work. Replying to Marcus G. Can we have another massive share, guys? Just share, just share. We are live now. If it all started, watch parties. We can get these figures up. We need these figures up. Everybody share. Everybody share. Everybody share. 
Uh, just on my tea break at work, Marcus G, thank you for doing all your essential work. We love it. We appreciate it. All of you out there as key workers, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is very, very much appreciated. Massive round of silent applause for the key workers. There we go. Wonderful. Excellent, guys. Thank you very much. Zinky do says Finley Lawless. Marcus G, you're very welcome. I love garlic. It's good for your heart, says Margaret Sheldon. And you have a beautiful heart, Margaret. Look after it, my dear. Absolutely. Gordon Robertson, have you trialed, tried the wild garlic? Gordon Robertson, I've walked through woods and woods of it. When I lived in East Lothian and when I lived in Cumbria, Oh, the smell. My old friend used to go, oh, to wild. I said, what's that smell? Wild garlic. Oh. I said, oh, it's beautiful. I just felt good smelling it. <sniffs> Marcus G. Wild garlic keeps Longshanks Leonard away, but not for long. <laughs> Garlic's not good when you're snogging noggin, says noggins. Garlic's beautiful. It, just, it helps if you both have it, actually, I think. Now, not that I'm an experienced snogger, of course. Uh, Gordon Robinson, you do your potatoes and veg same way as me, except for the garlic, but I'll give it a try. Try it, Gordon, because it doesn't blow your head off, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And when you've eaten it, you know, I certainly, I can only speak for me, but I thought, that was absolutely delicious. So I top and tail it. I take off the skin, and then a wee tiny top and tail just of top and bottom, and then when I've got maybe half a dozen um, cloves, I'll give them a wee wash under the tap or I'll just throw them in the steamer and away you go. So there you go. Um, I'm having a busy morning between this phantom munchie box and work. So I apologise for my sporadic attendance, Scotty. Longshanks Leonard, you are 100% forgiven, but you must look after yourself. You know, I think you went for it with a munchie box, didn't you? Gordon Hadley's watching Stephen Menzies. <coughs> <coughs> Don't worry about the cough, had it for 20 years. Scotty McClure, excellent show today as usual. I'll say dinky dinky do. Have a good day. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Kareem, I look forward to it. Every day is a beautiful day. Michael Yule's watching. Scotty, my wife said if I'm allowed back to work next week, She'll not need to put anything in the hole. She will just fill it back in again. Wonder what she's talking about. She's maybe got cuttings, Peter Connolly. And she's wanting to uh, to bring them on. You know, she's plant propagation. My father used to do that. In fact, the day my father passed away, he went to the doctors in the morning and she said to him, I, I could admit you, I'm a wee bit concerned and he said, no, 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 I'm not going in. Um, I think the enzymes in the liver aren't working properly anymore. No, no, I'll go home. And he went home and he had a lovely lunch. And then he said to my mother, right, I'm away out to thin the tomato seeds. Right? <laughs> so he was going out to his greenhouse. And then, bless him, the lovely man, he came in and he had afternoon tea and he said to my mother, I think I'll have a wee lie down. And uh, she said, oh, yes, that would be good for you. And he went upstairs and then a tremendous thud and he'd gone. And the doctor said, no, nope, out like a light, man, we'd have gone before he hit the floor. No pain, no suffering. Oh, what a wonderful man too. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me recently, he said, my father died. His father was in his 80s. He said, my father died, he said, and I sat down on the front steps of the house and I wept and I wept and I wept. And I said, yes, obviously. Sort of, he said, not just because of his passing, because of all the knowledge that went with him. Is that not incredible? So there you are. And it's true, it's the knowledge that we go. But I believe, you see, we will have another life. We shall all meet again. 
the baddies will go to the hot place, so they should be thinking. <coughs> the baddie that um, managed to inveigle my life savings out of me, he said there is no God. Shock time coming for him. Uh, they were amazing. The Loma Scottish Dance Band thoroughly enjoyed it. Stephen Menzies, yes, I shared it, and you and I were bantering back and forward. They're just outstanding players. Uh, the only thing bad about getting back to work would be missing the pop-up. It's been brilliant during this lockdown. Peter Connolly, I thank you because it means it's worth doing. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, what I get out of this is interacting with you guys. And hopefully you guys get something out of interacting with me. Fair exchange is no robbery. And it's absolutely free. You know, so I mean, so it's just something we do. I thought it, it's a little tiny, tiny service to everybody to say, come and have a chat for an hour in the morning. Let us know you're okay. We just talk about all sorts of things. Some of it complete nonsense. Some of it, as Gordon Sterling would say, havering. And uh, some of it very, very profound and interesting. And you all make that. It's your show. I am but a mere catalyst. So there you go, my darlings. Uh, Alistair King's watching, joining us. Great. The goodbye song. Oh, gosh. It's time I was away. <coughs> Great show, Scotty. See you tomorrow. Dinky do for new. Thanks, Robert Rovers. Richie McCusker. Scotty should set up one of these only fans to get more followers. I've heard good things. I'll uh, maybe do that, Fraser Guthrie, but uh, I don't want to miss all the people. Maybe I'm on it, but we'll uh, we'll look at that as well and see what is what. I'm going to have to dash off. So there we are. I'll sing you the goodbye song. <clears throat> goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of the tarzan, au revoir, and a cheery oh, cheery, cheery, my darlings. Look after your dear selves. Stay absolutely fabulous. Stay beautiful, but most importantly, stay home, stay in, unless you're a key worker, and stay safe. This is Scotty McClue saying to every single one of you, Dinky Do, thanks for watching. Ta da las! Woo! Scotty McClue has left the building, but he hasn't really because he's staying in.